Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be walking through how you take an image and if there's text within that image and convert that into actual text that you can process, whether through be some kind of program or you wanna just use that for your own personal reasons. And the best part is you're gonna be able to do this in three lines of code. Now, I embellished a little bit, although only you are gonna be using three lines of code. There's a lot of additional code that goes behind this. What I've done is I've just written a program on top of a couple of other programs to make it very simple for you. There's a lot of hard work that other coders have put into this. I've also contributed a little bit as well. But at the end of the day, you're just gonna get a program that's gonna allow you to execute a few things within three lines. One, you can take any URL or you can take an actual path, a directory path on your computer and you can input it into there and it'll actually spit out the text for you. But then you may be asking yourself, wait a minute, there's tons of apps that do that. Why am I gonna bother taking an image when I can just do that very quickly with my phone? But when you think of most of the things that are built in Python, they're built around scale. And what you wanna be able to do is you wanna be able to scale that technology or scale that program that you've built. Now, while it may be okay for you to go ahead and take one or two or three programs and try to you know, extract the text out of an image, can you imagine doing that for 10, 20, 30, 50, or even 100 images? The best part of this is there's another function that I wrote for you. Again, only three lines of code that's gonna allow you to take how many ever number of images you have with three lines of code, extract the text from every single image and put it into an Excel spreadsheet for you. Pretty cool. Now the one thing to keep in mind is although Tesseract is a really, really good tool, you have other large organizations out there like Google and Facebook and Amazon that actually have their own APIs and they have much, much more further research done into this. Now Tesseract is managed by Google, however, Google will consistently train the training data so that it applies more to whatever they're looking for. So their accuracy far supersedes what we're gonna to get to today. And you can always use the APIs and some of them do have free tiers, but a lot of them you have to start paying for. But if you just wanna start messing around with image recognition and starting with the basics of text, this is a great way to do it. So in a nutshell, let me explain how this works. So you take a picture, then there's a program called OpenCV. What OpenCV is gonna do is it's gonna go and look into the picture and see if there's any text it can identify. And if there is any text around it, it's gonna draw what we call a bounding box around it. So basically circling around that text. Then we pass that text on to the neural network. And the neural network is gonna use fancy technology like edge detection, forward and back propagation, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And it's gonna say, okay, each one of these characters, so say I have the word sats, it's gonna say, all right, the first one is an S, the second one is an A, the third one is a T. And sometimes it does get it wrong, but this is where you need to have a whole bunch of engineers consistently training this model. But for the purpose of today, we're gonna get some pretty good accuracy and you're gonna see that. Now, there are some really cool use cases for this. I actually read some articles where people were able to catch criminals just by looking at the pictures they would post on Facebook. And what would happen is in the background, you would find either a restaurant name or a city or an address or an intersection, which would allow authorities to pinpoint their exact location. You can even take large text data like newspapers and articles that are potentially PDFs or images and you can convert them into text for you to process as well. Now this video is only meant to scratch the surface of what this technology can do. What we're using today is the out of the box model that it comes trained with. But the accuracy is pretty damn good and you're gonna see why. All right, so I'm gonna hop onto my computer. I got my scotch, I'm ready to go. <sighs> Amazing. All right guys, so we have two files here. One is gonna be called app.py, which is gonna be the main code and that's gonna be the one where you're gonna run your three lines. And honestly, anybody can do it. This, this is so straightforward. I've made it, tried to make it so easy for everybody that almost anybody can run this. And then I will go under the hood and show you this code that I wrote that is sort of in, sort of sits in the back, but you don't really need to know what this does. Um, but I'll explain it for those that want to see it anyways. And there's even more code embedded in here that links back to the neural network under this thing called Tesseract. But let's go ahead, let me walk you through the code here. So it is very simple. So I created this function called words to text.py. Now the way the schema is set up, I just have this folder called word to text and I've posted this on GitHub so you can check out the link down below. But essentially I've got my app.py which is gonna be my main file. I've got this as my import that I'm gonna import in. And then I've just got a couple of images for us to test. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test these three images with you guys live. And then we'll also look at some URLs that we can put in. 
And then maybe what I'll do is I'll actually throw in a couple of more images into this file that we can play around with when we're looking at it from the perspective of looking at the entire directory. So in this file, I've basically set up two functions for you. One function is if you just want to go ahead and translate one image. And in that one image, you can either enter in a URL or you can enter in a path to the image on your computer somewhere. That's it. So let me show you how that works first. So we're going to go from words to text import. And the first function is just called image img to text. And I'm just going to for sure, I'm just going to shorten this and say i to t or something like that. All right. So that's line number one. Remember, we've got two more lines to go and then we're golden. We're good to go. Next, we're going to say text. And here what I'm saying is we need to output the text into some variable and I'm calling that text. So I to T, so I'm referencing this variable up here. And in this, like I said, you're either going to pass in an image directory or you're going to pass in a path. So let's go ahead and try some of our images out. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at image number one. And then the last line, print text. That's it. That is all you need to do. So anytime you want to process an image that is on your computer, you just need to update this. Three lines of code. So let's see when we run this, what happens. And it says, oh, okay. So let me go ahead and open up what image number one is. All right, so I'm dragging over the directory here, going to images, image number one. Oh, okay. So that one did it pretty damn well. Cool. So now we're going to try this one. And now this is going to be a good scenario where you're going to see Tesseract isn't always 100% because this is the out of the box solution. So it is going to recognize part of this, but maybe not all of this, but let's see what it does recognize. So if I just go here and I say image example number two, so it's actually going to recognize designer. And for some reason, I can tell you why, for some reason, it doesn't actually recognize suit factory. And that's just probably because of how the algorithm works in general. So remember what I said, what it's first going to do is it's going to go ahead and open this image up. Then it's going to search for text. In this case is designer and it draws, draws a bounding box around it. And what may happen in certain circumstances is this bounding box here may conflict with this over here. So see how it kind of cuts off on there. And so, when this bounding box is drawn, it'll actually just so designer in there. And because this really isn't a word or a letter, it doesn't really recognize it. And I'm sure it's probably more to an angle. And the other thing is this is this is the, the word suit here is very similar in background to this. And the way the neural network is going to work is it's going to go in and it's going to try to detect the edges here. And as it detects the edges, it's going to consistently ask itself if it thinks that it actually has a letter or not. And in this case, it just may be hard to do it. So that's maybe why I didn't pick it up. That's just my theory. It's not 100%, but from the research that I did online, it sounds like that's most likely the probable cause. So Tesseract actually works really well with images that are like something you'd find in a newspaper or in an article, probably because of just the clarity of it. So one of the things Tesseract does is it actually converts text to image, or sorry, image to text a lot better when your image is in grayscale. And because this is not using too many colors, uh, when the neurons are firing, it's probably a little bit easier for it to recognize the letters and the edges. So in this case, it's just a little bit easier to go ahead and look at. But let's just go ahead and run this. So this is a fairly lengthy text. Let's just say, you know, we'll, we'll look for what is computer vision. It's gonna start with as humans we perceive and it's gonna end with Livingstone 2008. But I'll bring this up anyway. So let's go ahead and bring this in here. Now let's hit print. So this one's gonna take a little bit of time to process, but not too long. But if I bring this back here now, let me just shrink this image. For the most part, I feel that it's done a pretty good job. But let me bring this image back up here. So when we look at this image, it says, you know, as humans, we perceive three dimensional structure and so forth. And it ends with Palmer 1999, Livingston 2008. So it actually captured almost everything 100% here. So not bad. Not bad at all. So if you want to go ahead and look at newspapers or articles and you want to convert them, this is a great tool to use, especially with Tesseract 4.0, which uses a neural network. The version before that didn't really use it. And I believe right now they're on Tesseract 5, so it's even better. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at some images, uh, sorry, some URLs. So I randomly picked these URLs and I actually have to bring them up because I don't even remember what they are. So let's just go ahead and bring this up first. So the image we're about to convert says seven design tips on how to choose, modify, and improve your slider images. 
It's got these little slider things on the side. So let's go ahead and print this and see what it does. So not bad. Got most of it, if not all of it. Seven design tips on how to, yeah, got all of it actually. All right, so we're gonna try another one because I wanna give you some understanding of the different types of images out there. Now, the other thing that I built into the code, I kind of tricked the, the, uh, the browser. So I basically, there's something called a request header. So whenever this is gonna send a signal out to the server to get the information of that website, if I don't put in like a, a fake browser, it's gonna think that it's a bot that's going in there. And so it's gonna give me what they call like a 403 or a 407 error. I can't remember which one it was. So I've kind of disguised it so that it thinks that we're uh, a browser going in so it wouldn't give us that error. So that feature is also built into the code. And I'll walk you through that when we go through the next file. All right, so the next one is just a blurb that I found on Adobe. So what we're expecting to see here is Adobe, the Adobe logo, Acrobat. So this is what we're expecting to see. And I'll bring this up right after we run this as well. So let me go ahead and run this for us. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this up a little bit so that we can read this thing fully. We only have three lines of code today, so I'm not gonna need a lot of the console above. But if you look at it, it did a pretty good job. If not, I think it got everything, again, it may have messed up a few areas. Actually, the reason why it messed up this area is because this already has a bounding box run into it. So this is actually a good example. This is what you call a bounding box. So the system will go in and it'll literally isolate every single word, give it a bounding box, and then try to identify what it means. And it does it pretty quick. And we're just gonna try one more URL for fun. So I'm gonna do this one next. So let me go ahead and put the URL in there and let's see what it shows us. All right, so again, pretty good job. Tomorrow and tomorrow, tomorrow creeps. Cool. So I mean, the nice thing about this is typically when you're doing something like importing a, an, an image, it can get a little tricky. So I've taken care of a lot of the pre-processing in the, in the background for you and it allows you to go and enter, like I said, a file path or a URL, which is very convenient as well. But now again, it goes back to the question of how do you get scale out of this stuff? And you know, if you really wanna reap the benefits of designing something like this, how do you go about doing that? So in this scenario, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now show you the second function that I built in. And that is called from word to text import. And so now all you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and add DIR at the end. And all that means is we're gonna pass in a directory now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here, we're gonna pass it the images because that's where all of this stuff is sitting. We're gonna right click, hold down option if you have a Mac, copy image path name. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this and as it processes, what I wanna show you is the fact that in this directory images, you're gonna see an Excel spreadsheet just pop up. So let me just quickly run this and it should populate in just a second. So there you go. So it just populated right now. When I open this, what it's gonna show you is it's gonna show you the actual image name. Okay, so this was example three, two, one, and it's gonna give you the text for everything that we ran. And that was ran in a matter of seconds. So if you can imagine, if you had 100 pictures here and you wanted to run this, it is very easy to do. And then you'd ask yourself, well, why in the world would I want to run this? Because when my family and I went away on a trip one day, I just wanted to, for fun, go ahead and tag all the different pictures that I had and, you know, make a little collage that said the places that we visited. And not every single image had uh, text next to it, but the ones that did showed up here with something next to it. Otherwise, it would just show up as a blank. And so that really allowed me to go back and say, oh man, we actually went to this restaurant or we were next to this restaurant and we didn't even know. And it's, it's kind of fun and it's kind of cool to do. You can also use this stuff at work or if you're trying to do this project for school, you can do that as well. A lot of different applications, especially if you're a developer and you have you know, URLs that you want to extract data from in terms of words, that's another great way to do it as well. I actually have a project coming up on that, which is gonna be out in a couple of weeks and we'll talk more about that then, but it's actually pretty cool what I'm doing and I think you guys will find it pretty cool as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna switch gears very quickly and I'm gonna walk you through the background here. And this is more for the guys that actually wanna get into the, into the details around this. So let's go ahead and quickly take a look at this code. It's not a very difficult code at all, to be honest with you. So for, the, for those of you that are familiar, OpenCV is uh, computer vision, that's what it stands for tool. And I've just imported that. All it does is that's what will take your image and it'll draw the bounding boxes around the different images. Now you can use OpenCV also for facial recognition, which I'll do another video on in, a, in, in the future as well. But you can start looking at things like if people are laughing or smiling, there is actually a company in Europe 
what it does is instead of actually charging you money to come into the theater to watch a movie it will charge you every single time you smile to watch a funny movie and it was a very interesting concept and if you just go ahead and google that you'll find it but there's really cool innovative ways people are coming up with to solve common problems out there and one is you know theater visits were down be just because of the rise of netflix and, and youtube and all that other kind of stuff so you know it's it's interesting to see how people are using technology in different ways to get around things but I digress. So the second one is the Tesseract module as well. So you have to install something called Tesseract, which is I believe written in C++. So then you have to add something called PyTesseract, which is a wrapper that sits on top of that Tesseract module, if you want to call it. Um, I've also imported regular expressions. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this is to use the URL for you to pull the data. Uh, this is just for some conversion I've used. This is for the file pass, and this is to get you to the Excel file, the pandas. And I will actually have a detailed video on uh, data frames as well. But I'm going to skip this function for a sec. I'm just going to go down to this one. All this is saying is that whatever you type in into your function over here, it's saying that if it actually starts with HTTP, that it's most likely a URL. So go ahead and treat that as a URL. So I wrote this function up here that says, Take that URL, trick the browser into thinking that it's actually a browser. Go ahead and open that URL, convert it into something that OpenCV can read. And then you want to use grayscale because that is the best way to convert images to text is to actually look at grayscale. Color just doesn't have the same kind of accuracy. And then if it doesn't have HTTP in front of it, treat it as if it's an actual path. That's all this means here. This is where Tesseract is actually starting to use some of the neural networks. So the way Tesseract works is Tesseract is, is an actual OCR tool, which is called uh, optical character recognition. But what it's basically doing is it's saying, all right, take whatever you've passed in, in terms of an image after you've converted it to grayscale and go ahead and apply some machine learning to it and take the text out. And the machine learning is really built into Tesseract. We don't have to mess around too much into it. I mean, you know, maybe I'll do a tutorial in the future and walk you through line by line how Tesseract does this, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, here I can specify the language. Now OEM, this is the type of model you want to use. When you pick zero, this is going to use a traditional way that Tesseract did the OCR. And that was just, no, you know, there was no neural networks. Uh, so it's using something called an LSTM neural network and it didn't really use it. The minute you specify one, you're saying, go ahead, tell the engine to start using the neural networks to do it. Uh, and then PSM, you don't really have to mess around with this too much. I find six works very well. Um, generally, I jump between three, six, and seven. You can Google what it is, but that's just what works for me. And I would just, I'm gonna just keep it there. And then finally, I'm saying take out any new line characters, return the text, and that is what you're seeing. So this is for that single image. Now, if I wanna go ahead and do an image to text directory, all I'm saying is after you pass in the directory path here, if the file ends with a JPEG or a PNG, then go ahead and take all of those files and append it to a variable called files. Now, one thing I should say is GIFs for some reason do not work that well. They work every now and then, but I find that GIFs have a lot of error. If you do want to go ahead and play with GIFs, all you do is you say, add in another OR field, say OR file that ends with, and then put GIF here and just append it to the end. Very simple. And now it's going to iterate through every single one of those file names here and it's gonna store it in a dictionary called translation and that dictionary is then translated into a data frame. That data frame is then converted into Excel and you're good to go. Now I know I whizzed through that very, very quickly, but I kind of also did that intentionally because if you really do wanna learn this, I encourage you to go ahead line by line and try to see what everything means. Try to print out every now and then. So, you know, put in a random print here and say something like print files and see what it gives you. Right? Try to look at the response and that's the best way to learn. But what I wanted to do is just give you the high, high level of what this is doing. It's a very, very simple code. Like I said, a lot of the hard work is done by the guys who worked on Tesseract. So kudos to those guys. But for the most part, very, very basic. All I've done is I've taken a lot of that background information. I've taken a lot of the, you know, the security issues may have had conversion between HTTP and a path name and then processing, you know, 10, 20, hundred files at once. I've also written a function and code for you that here so that all you have to worry about is three lines of code. And that was my goal here to make sure that all you had to worry about was literally three lines of code. And that is all folks. That is Tesseract for you in a nutshell. All right, guys. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. 
that was a really fun little project that I put together for you guys. The code is actually down in the link. I posted it on GitHub, so you can go ahead and download it and use it for yourself. Do whatever you need to do. Put it in your projects, or if you went on a trip somewhere and you want to process a thousand images, go for it. Just keep in mind that if you're using a slow computer, it could take a little bit of time. If you've got a strong computer with a good solid GPU or an external GPU, then it may go a little bit quicker, but just be patient, it'll get the work done. And in one of my upcoming tutorials, I'm actually gonna teach you not only how to build a neural network, but also how to train a neural network. So watch for that to come. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please consider commenting and subscribing. Until then, I will see you later. Take care. Thank you.